Lucy, cue us in. So today, on the second exciting episode of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, wait. Neither of us watched it. <laughs> and it's not exciting. So How do you know? How I'm just going know? off the first episode. Uh... <laughs> so today, it's a slow week. It is a slow Literally, week. Literally, nothing happened in TV land, movie land, comic land. Something happened in TV land. We'll get to that. All right. Yeah, comic stuff true. was a little light, but, you know, it's... it's, it's well, it's pretty much on the whole, getting back up. everything like, was pretty light, actually. Yeah. It's just, we got a big con coming up, so everyone's kind of... Yeah, holding their news back. Yeah. So. Dribbling out little teasers here and there. Plus, we get all sorts of, like, video game news from there, too, and TV news and movie yeah. news and stuff. All kinds of news now at Less, less so from New York than San Diego, but yeah. there's a little bit. I think well, that's why I like Actually, Marvel didn't announce very much at San Diego this year, remember? It was mostly, like, Dynamite, IDW. That's true. So they're saving it all for New York. This is true. So, plus it's close to the Marvel Now 2 relaunch yeah. type of deal, right? So. Plus it's their headquarters. True as well. So, anyways, we have an on-the-spot comic review singular singular it's They're, pronounced singular it's pretty light week so it's a pretty light week gary will be bringing you this week's featured comic as well as our ppp pendulum power panel <laughs> we should probably just call it by its real name the ppp that's i don't care for it i was okay with pendulites <laughs> yeah the yeah. ppp <laughs> my hot pay and then, oh, uh, what do we got? We got, we got a trade review by me. We got some uh, game toys and TV and whatever news. So yeah. Your daily roundup. So anyways, we're going to start off with you. I'm going to start with me. Because right. I am worth starting with. On the spot. On the spot. came back from the store. Yeah. My total of five books this week. Funny enough, after last month of no DC books, I have four. Huh. Four DC to one Marvel. Yeah. One Marvel. Pretty light week. I don't know why there were so few Marvel books this week. Yeah, I don't get it either. There was a lot of new uh, stories kicking off. Like, there was that Captain America one from... Uh, Captain America issue from Diggle and Granov. There was also... Oh, yeah, that miniseries. Yeah. Yeah. Two, uh, two issues is not a miniseries. I don't know why they're calling it a miniseries. Nah, whatever. And uh, there's some all-new X-Men special. It's like five issues... Yeah. Arms of the Octopus. I never even heard of it. I'm like, yeah, across nope. Spider Man and something else, but I don't recall. Yeah. I'm like, not getting it. So not getting it. So the uh, the issue I read and uh, going to talk a little bit about this week is All New X Men number six. Sorry, All New X Men number seventeen. It's part six yes. of Battle of the Atom. They've got so many numbers and words on these covers. It's getting a little out of hand, but. Uh, yeah, All New X-Men is one of my favorite books. It's uh, It's been really, really solid since the get-go, and thankfully we've got a good team on this issue compared to the last part of yep. uh, Battle of the Atom. It's been really good. Yeah. Um, Bendis and Immerman are, again, uh, showing off their various talents when it comes to uh, the X-Men universe, and this is uh, just another great part of the Battle of the Atom crossover, cool. which has been solid all the way through. It um, has been. It's been an actual really good crossover. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to when all the parts of this are collected in a hardcover. I will buy it. Even though I have the individuals, I will buy it. Yeah. Because it would be a cool set to have. But um, we got a little bit more since uh, coming off of last week's um, teaser at the end of uh, part five in uh, Wolverine and the X-Men 36. Cool. We uh, get to see a little bit of the uh, future world where uh, our quote-unquote X-Men uh, have come back in time from. We get to see a little bit of setup to what exactly went wrong in this world and why the X-Men from the future have traveled back to try and, you know, Quantum Leap style yeah. fix some problems. Quantum Leap, yeah. yeah. That's a good reference. I know, pulling deep on that one. <laughs> put, right, put right that which once went wrong. Mm -hmm. It's like the best tagline from a TV series ever. Yeah, I don't even care. It, it just totally is. So we've got uh, some scenes of uh, Allison uh, Blair, good old Dazzler, getting, uh, you know, making a quite a drastic career change. And uh, one of my favorite things about the uh, Battle of the Atom series has been the killer new look for Beast from the future. Yeah, I like him. I'm usually a big fan of um, lateral design, but every time they throw in a unilateral design, I think I have those words right, I think so. It kind of draws me to it. Like, he's got this one cool demon spiral horn and mm -hmm. a long tail. He looks so cool. 
and it makes me hate how Beast looks now so much more. I know. It's so, like, I hate it. And there's an issue um, of, what, All New X, or uh, All New Avengers, or New Avengers, whatever it was, where he's sitting around a conference table with the rest of the Illuminati, and he looks like he's 900 feet tall compared to everyone else. I know. It's so bad. See, I'm used to Ape Beast look now. It doesn't mean I like it, but I'm used to it. I was used to Cat Beast. Yeah. Didn't mean I like it, I was just accustomed to it. But this yeah. Ape Beast with the giant dome melon yeah. forehead thing? No. No. So we, uh, we get an ensuing uh, event which kind of kicks off where this world goes to hell. And uh, just some, it's cool because they have like some of the background characters. I, I love playing spot the altered design. Like, mm-hmm. who's this character? Who is this version? So that's really kind of nice to have future versions of uh, characters trying to figure out who they are. Yeah. And uh, we have a, a great shot of uh, the new future X Men at the Jean Grey School. And the designs that Bendis and Immerman came up for for some of the characters are just great. Yeah. We find out a little backstory about who they are, but we don't know who they all are. And I would love actually just like a mini series of this X Men. They'll probably do it anyway because it's so good. Yeah, uh, not really a spoiler because they're on the damn cover. We've got um, Colossus with a bitchin' mustache right out of Super Troopers, yeah. which is just great, and he's carrying the Soul Sword. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably a Doctor Strange kid because he's got the Eye of Agamotto but it looks like Cloak's Cloak so I know Dagger and Cloak have switched powers so I think it's Doctor Strange and Dagger's kid um, Iceman is like this cool badass wizard mm-hmm. Jubilee is now a Wolverine with claws we've got an Iron Man in Sentinel type looking armor and uh, this another girl here who has this cool shadow like panther thing with her it's either Black Panther and Storm's kid or it's one of the kids from the Future Foundation. They they say her name, but I, I, I don't know exactly who she is. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would love to see an X-Men series of these guys. And we get kind of some jump flashes back to what happened to kick off their bad world, where they are now with the current X-Men coming to visit them in the future, and then jumping back to the current day uh, Marvel timeline. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a little bit jumpy all across the board, but it never feels like you're lost reading the story. Yeah. There's, uh, Immerman does a good job of coloring... And uh, or setting the tone of each kind of time frame so you know where you are at each point in the book, which is really nice. Sometimes when they have time jump books like this, you like you're confused about what's going on, what, mm-hmm. especially when there's a flashback within a, a jump forward, it kind of gets a little confusing. But the the layouts are done really well in this. Yeah. Ma, the as I said, Immerman's art is great. Bendis still is just rocking on the X Men. Hmm. And the only issue I have with this is it ends with pretty much the exact same page as the Wolverine and the X-Men issue did from last week, part five. It's a single page splash of these future X-Men showing up somewhere, or like X-Men showing up somewhere and these future guys are there. Uh It's pretty much an exact duplicate of that shot. Little disappointing, especially for people who are reading all the parts. I know it's a case where they have to try and set it up where they don't they can't go on the assumption that people are going to get part five and then get part six because they might only be reading all new x-men they might not jump over and get wolverine and the x-men like from the previous week to set it up yeah but you know maybe design the shot a little better maybe have something else i showed you and you're like oh okay yeah yeah editor wasn't paying attention yeah it kind of seems like that but i was i'm very happy with this issue i love the battle of the atom crossover it's been probably one of the best x-men crossovers in years sorry right. so uh i agree yeah i'm giving all new x-men easily a five out of five for the week go check it out cool go get the other parts of battle of the atom it's fantastic now segue into your ppp yes we'll do that uh because it segues <laughs> nicely segues nicely my power panel of the week still not going with what you said uh is actually from chapter five of battle of the atom as we were talking about it's from wolverine and the x-men number 36 this, uh, I chose this as my power panel of the week, more so for content than actual how the page looks. Slam bang, wow, action, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah because just... how do you say the guy's name, the artist? Oh, Giuseppe Camincoli. Yeah. Doesn't exactly nail this issue of Wolverine and the X-Men from last week. It's kind of sloppy, looks rushed, and compared to how the book normally looks with Bradshaw drawing it, I just wish he had drawn this book. But uh, the panel of the week comes from uh, this issue, and it's uh, maybe some spoilers here, so be be warned. 
It's uh, the Stefford Cuckoos, or at least two of them. Uh, Emma Frost and young Jean Grey battling off against... Uh, Future Jean Grey. I was just going to say Zorn and not spoil it, but there you go. Uh, everyone knows, I think, by this point. By this, this part, point, good point. Five or six yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So. Spoiler. So, yeah, it's like this cool psychic battle where they have all their psychic forms and that fighting around in the air, kind of like blown up above them and they're just kind of standing there so to everyone else looking around they're not doing anything mm -hmm. but how the panel is carried out is they're engaged in this big psychic battle so it's kind of cool and uh, it, as I said if it was drawn by Bradshaw it would look so much better uh, I was actually going to pick the very last page of um, this issue but as I said, once I got to Chapter 6's last page, and it's pretty much the exact same. Not really powerful. <laughs> Not really powerful at this point, so I switched it up. Yeah. But uh, odds are, reading through uh, all new X-Men number 17, as I just talked about, I got a feeling my power panel is going to come from this issue, so a little bit of Think a so? heads up from next week's issue. I haven't read your DC books yet. We'll see. Yeah, unless it's a damn good one from Forever Evil, I don't think the rest of them are going to have much weight to them. Yeah. So. What do you got this week, Jeffrey? All right. Trade reviews. Ooh. I have reviews, plural. two science fiction books. I love sci-fi books. Both quite different in pretty much every aspect. <laughs> uh, first one is Kukabura K from the French publisher Soleil. This is the Olé. English language version put out by Marvel a few years back. Uh, it's got, uh, Humberto Ramos on art. Oh! Yep. So it's a pretty beautiful book, actually. Uh, written by three, I'm assuming, French guys named Chris, Mitrick, and Hicks. Basically, it is the end of the universe. These guys are trying to outrun it, and they head off to this, like, outworld, wherever, edge of the known universe planet, and they're just basically trying to survive every single ordeal that's thrown at them and there's a lot <laughs> um it was all right i think i don't know if maybe something was lost in the translation perhaps but sometimes it'll jump to the past and give you a flashback and then sometimes it'll jump forward again or it'll jump to a different like they're on this ship there are different teams of people like different groups so it'll jump back and forth to different groups but there are so many characters you can't remember who they all are. Hmm. So it's a little, tiny little bit confusing. Especially the flashbacks, because they don't really segue into them very well. And then when they come out of it, yes, you know, obviously you're coming out of the flashback, which is all right. But going into them, it's a little disjointed. It does just doesn't work very well. Hmm. Um, Humberto Ramos's art, though never been better it is fantastic. I, I love that guy fantastic now he does one of my favorite spider-man yeah he was doing this book a few well quite a while ago for soleil the marvel book came out years afterwards but oh, man. so he did this in the early 2000s i believe and uh it basically looks like the definition of a comic book yeah he took his time with it it's gorgeous it's colorful everything about the art is spot on perfect the story pretty good like i said a little spotty in places and just i think way way too many characters uh they should have i think focused more on one core team than on so many but all in all i enjoyed it so i give it a four out of five just because the art really brings the story out more I would pay anything for a humberto ramos inspired anime i really would I It'd like be pretty sweet. seeing these in a cartoon form would be. I know, sweet. like that would I think it would make a great animated feature. Yeah. Or series, but uh, as a book, it was good. It just wasn't great. I love the shift in colors that go on through <clears> this. Like I know. every page kind of feels like has a totally different tone to it. I love mm -hmm. it. Yeah, it's pretty great. And I purchased that book, I believe, for a dollar. Good deal. Good deal, yes, for, uh, I believe, a $20 hardcover or a $25 hardcover. So not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all, actually. Uh, second trade review came out last week. It is, or maybe, actually, sorry, a couple weeks ago. Lost Vegas by Jim McCann and Janet Lee on art. Janet K. Lee on art. It's uh, another sci-fi book. 
I thought it was a fable trade when I far, saw it. Far, <laughs> yeah, far, far different in scope and every other way imaginable than Kukabura K. Um, her art is very different than anything anyone has probably seen before or since. <laughs> um, I did. I have read uh, Return of the Dapper Men. They are the creative team on that book as well, and that fits there. That sounds awesome. I know. This book, um, maybe because I've been spoiled by Saga, the art for me doesn't really fit. Now, it's cool art. Some of the character designs are really cool. The creature designs are really cool. The story's a very slow burn at first. I almost didn't want to keep reading past the first issue because I just found it so boring. Hmm. But I did, and I've read the whole thing, and it does get better. But again, it's just, it's a slow story. It's its one of those slow science fiction movies you've watched in the past, like Forbidden Planet or whatever, various other ones. Again, I think I've been spoiled by Saga lately because there's a lot of good action in that, a lot of good character development, good story, good everything, right? This one, it's only four issues. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, really. It's good. And it's about, uh, well, Las Vegas, obviously taking their cue from Las Vegas. So it's a gambling planet. <laughs> it's a good premise. I can't really say too much about this book. The covers are pretty. Just It's a very slow burn. It's very... I don't know. It's good. Would I ever re buy another trade paperback if a second series came out? No, I wouldn't. That pretty much sums it up there, I think. It's good, but... And I keep saying that. It just doesn't work totally for me. So I would only give this one a 3 out of 5. Jeff's lowest score ever. I don't know if it is. <laughs> it's close. It's close. Her art is good, like I said, but it just doesn't... I don't think it fits for this story. Hmm. I just really don't. See, it's it's a hard to describe book. Yeah, it's very hard to describe. It looks interesting. I mean, not, none of the yeah. pages look dull. No, and that's the thing. The it does keep you hooked because the art is so strange, and uh, you kind of want to go through, and you keep hoping it will get better, but it doesn't really. Hmm. It's it's like a slow episode of Doctor Who. Let's call it that. Hmm. You know those slow filler episodes. Yeah. That's what this felt like. It was like a filler trade for me to read in between other better trades hmm. so yeah three out of five i love jim mccann he's written some great stuff i like return of the dapper men um I love that title i know you should check that out actually it's pretty cool <laughs> and her art fits well on that book but this book uh no not for me anyways mm. so that's it that's uh kookaburra k and lost vegas or this week's science fiction trade reviews very cool yeah yeah so as we said at the top of the show, not uh, not a ton of comic news rolling out the last little while. No. Because everything's, most of the bigger things are going to be, uh, well, the big announcements are going to be from Comic-Con. Yeah, New York Comic-Con. New York Comic-Con. Yeah. But uh, Marvel's been uh, throwing out almost hourly, I'd say. <laughs> it seems the, like Yeah. That. They're uh, all new Marvel now. I'm not a fan of that. All, all new, new Marvel, Marvel now. now. I, yeah. They're, Teasers. Yeah, they're tossing Teasers. out their uh, their round two, I guess you can call it. Yeah. Of uh, Marvel Now, and they've had like the one word teaser posters before they did it with the first round of um, Marvel Now. It was yeah. superior and indestructible and everything. So they're they're going back to the well on them. We've got uh, little key words like assassin and atonement and yeah. higher sinners, global and mm -hmm. things like that. Which you know, global's got to be another Avengers book possibly so yay because we need more yes we do just throw avengers on every title marvel well just i'm hoping they name. resurrect something different like maybe champions that would be cool yeah. or... maybe defenders let's get the they defenders. have defenders fearless defenders i said defenders <laughs> i said specifically said defenders well half of them are original defenders nah. valkyrie yeah. yep that's one uh, that's one yeah, all I'm saying. So, uh, so yeah, they, we have uh, creator, artist, and writer announcements on on these teaser posters with the big number one fade in the background, yeah. but nothing said about what they're writing. You can kind of make your own guesses. Yeah, there have been a lot of guesses. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of look at which books might not be surviving. What books past. are you hoping for to see? 
New books. What new um, books? I'm hoping to see a good Winter Soldier book come back. Well, that's a guarantee. Yeah. Maybe so. under the Assassin title. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, maybe a Black Widow book. Yep. I'm hoping for a new Black yeah. Widow book. The uh, the Atonement one, as I don't know what it could be, but I just like the sound of where that could go. Yeah. So I'm hoping maybe that's a new Venom book. Because uh, we know Venom's ending. Yeah. And I'm hoping that he comes back because I love Flash Thompson as Venom. Yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of, or maybe it could be under Sinners, which could probably replace Thunderbolts, because, I mean, Thunderbolts has basically yeah. been one of their lowest books, so that's not going to be lasting It could be long. a new Punisher title, though. could be a new Punisher title, yeah. Yeah, because we don't have one right now. Yeah, unfortunately. So, yeah. So, I mean, we're going to have to wait and see until New York Comic Con to see what all these teasers mean. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be the case where Marvel's going to have to tell us what they all are, and it's going to be like their mm. entire panel is explaining these posters. Yeah. I'm hoping for Doctor Strange. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see Doctor Strange. Book. I don't... If we're going to get a Doctor Strange series, I don't see it until 2015, just my guess, because... Well, hard they're, to say. They might going... want to get it off the ground first, right? Get well, some... They, exactly. They want it for the movie. We we can go ahead and probably assume that 2016, we might see a Doctor Strange movie. Yeah. So, put a little bit of groundwork into it. Yeah. I think... It might be too long to have it launched next uh, year. I don't think so. They could do like a television series, do volume one, volume two, volume three, yeah. or series one, series two, you know, season one. That'd be something kind of cool. I'd like to see some publisher try, like one of the yeah. big ones. Like follow the BBC model of uh, stuff. Just have yeah. s- like have a six or seven or eight issue mini yeah, and then take a break and, and then come back to it. Just keep rolling them out. Yeah. yeah. Just do something like that so you're not... So you're, you're going for punch yeah. as opposed to just cranking out issues every month. I'm hoping also for a new Silver Surfer book. That could be good. That could be higher, maybe. Yeah. I would love to see a Surfer yeah. book. I want to see a Champions book. Love the Champions. Or a Ghost you, Rider. Let's that could be Sinners. Ghost. I want to see a Ghost. Yeah, that could be. That could be Sinners. I want to see a Ghost Rider book. Yeah. Uh, what else? There's there's so much. Yeah. Like just, I want to see Marvel horror titles come back. Oh, that'd be cool. I want to see them all come back. Or something. Legion of Monsters like a Legion series. Legion of Monsters series. Yeah. That'd be that'd be amazing. I would buy ten copies of that just, just to keep just it going. For, just for sales. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. I I think a lot of the ones you said, like I would love, I would definitely add a Doctor Strange, Silver Surfer title mm-hmm. to my bag because I'm cutting some DC books. I so definitely I can, would. Yeah. Oh, cutting DC books. Yeah. Ooh. I've 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 had it with Superman and I've had it with Detective. Hmm. So. I'm just done with them. I'm keeping Batman in action because Scott yeah. Snyder and Greg Pak. What about so. the Superman Wonder Woman book coming up? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Still unknown quantity. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I like what they're doing with them. I don't like how the relationship that they're in has zero impact on their own books. Yeah. So I kind of like to see some type of yeah. impact that their relationship has. So maybe that will be the book to get. Hmm. So, I don't know. Um, two Superman team-up books. Yeah. Seems a little odd, but... It does. Yeah. <clears throat> On the DC front, uh, Villains Month has finally ended, thankfully. Yeah. I don't, how does all the normal... I haven't read any of my DC books, so I'm not sure how everything kind of plays out now. You've had the whole Villains Month with the books, but now the stories are kicking back up. Where do they take place in relation to Forever Evil? I don't know. Because, like, in Detective, I saw the cover. You've got him fighting that Wrath Wraith guy... Like, well, where the hell does this take place in relation to Forever Evil? Mm-hmm. And Forever Evil being seven issues, you're not going to have... The t- it's all going to be screwed up. I don't know. Yeah. So, th- thanks for ending it and, you know, pissing off retailers left, right, and center with your allocations. Severe allocations. Yeah. yeah. And then allocating your allocations after the fact yeah. as well. So, big props to that. And there was even... <clears throat> I forgot to ask our uh, comic book shop guy today. DC put out a request to... Uh, Hold we, back free hold, titles. Yeah, to hold back. And they're titles that, you know, not a lot of people get, so yeah. I don't think a lot of retailers are going to bother. Yeah, I know. DC's not going to do anything to them. It's, yeah. It's not the retailer's fault. Yeah. So They're not shipping early. They're just it's for storyline purposes. Yeah. So, so yeah, a little bit odd. So, thankfully, DC's Villain Month's experiment is Indeed. over. Indeed. Uh, I call it the worst out of the three September events they've done the last three years like the yeah. reboot the zero issues <clears throat> and then these the zero issues were good though zero issues were like, really cool they were like kind of origin-y type yeah, stuff for the so, heroes and like yeah kinda setting showing us where they were at the time and i mean i guess these sort of are these villains ones but 
putting out so many yeah. in one month. That... And so, some of them were really good, like uh, the Ventriloquist one. I yeah. haven't been reading Batgirl for a while, but the Ventriloquist one yeah. it was freaking dark. Mm. Like, it went to some dark places, and it was really solid. Uh, the Mr. Freeze one was also really good, despite the fact that I hate New 52 Mr. Freeze. Yeah. I utterly despise this character. I cannot mm. tell you how much... I, I'm going to tell you, actually. They ruined Mr. Freeze. Oh, yeah? Ruined him. At the end of the day, Mr. Freeze was always a sympathetic character. Yeah. He wasn't... Doing it for his wife. He was doing it for his wife. Nope. Gone. Now he's just a psychopath, evil guy with ice powers. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks for ruining a complex character by making him insane. Yeah. And then ruining that because DC can't write how to do insanity properly. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's why I hate Mr. Freeze. But, <laughs> uh, anyway, some of the Villains Month books were good, some were trash. I'd probably put it about a quarter of them were decent. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't get a single issue. So am I. Yeah. So am because I. Because, why would I? I'm not buying four or five issues of Green Lantern a month, so... Why buy five of those? Yeah. yeah. Like, no the sense. characters I like, some of them were in these books, but... I'm not, it's just, they were ringing people for money, and I'd rather just get the omnibus at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fantastic bit of toy news. Yes. I read this last Pretty night. Pretty cool. And I almost, like, knocked my desk over with joy. But uh, I'm a big Transformers fan. Uh, have been since I was a wee little lad. Indeed. My mom even has a photo of me as uh, a wee little fair-headed child in uh, back in back <laughs> in the. I my hair was like silver. It was so blonde. Oh back really? In the day. And a uh, little photo of me when I was a child in the Englands. I'm surrounded by all my Transformers. That's cool. They're all and I'm like holding Prime and Galvatron because I never had Megatron. Yeah. And yeah, I'm so happy. So uh, a big fan of the Masterpiece uh, line of Transformers figures. Those I, are awesome. They're fan. They're great. They're just. There are a lot of them are just giant versions of G1 classic Transformers, mm -hmm. just engineered to look perfect and transform perfectly. I have the original uh, MP01 Optimus Prime. I have Galv um, Hot Rod, Grimlock, and Starscream. Yeah. Uh, they change scale, so the Prime is way bigger than everybody else. But uh, they're great figures. Uh, there's there's been 21 of them. Some of them are kind of repaint. So there was a yeah. There was a thundercracker and sky warp version of starscream mm -hmm. and uh the there's an mp22 that's coming out it's ultra magnus they've released an ultra magnus before it's just a white version of the optimus prime yeah but this one uses the newer mp10 optimus prime body and comes with a trailer that you can transform the trailer and just and toss the ultra magnus white tra uh, tractor into it to create an actual Ultra Magnus as he looks in the comics and the cartoon. Hmm. So, yeah. Pretty friggin' awesome. There's no yeah. pictures of it yet. It's up for a pre-order on a couple of sites, or one site, Big Bad Toys, and it's pricey. I, I think it's, it's either $289 or $389. I'm leaning towards more of the $389. So, that's on my birthday wish list at the moment because I friggin' want that. Yeah, it's it gonna, sounds awesome. It's going to be so good. I can't wait to see some pictures. Even if they're unpainted prototype pictures, it's going to be fantastic. I want it so bad. Yeah. Got uh, some video game news from the week video as well. Games. Video games! Uh, outside all the Grand Theft Auto stuff, uh, having some problems with GTA Online. Uh, worst news, some of the files, some of uh, save game files have been corrupted by uh, the online for some players. Oh, really? So that's kept me the hell off of GTA Online. Hmm. There's a cool bit where you get to create what your guy looks like, but it's not the slider bars or anything. So yeah, you design, you pick what your grandparents look like. There's like 15 or so grandparents or grandmothers, 15 or so <laughs> grandmothers, gran and then 15 or so granddads. Yeah. You pick combinations of that, and it affects what your mom looks like. You do the same for your dad. That's kind of And you can neat. adjust what your dad and your mom look like to a certain degree, and then it affects what you look like. Huh. And there's even special dads, and it's John Marsden. Special dads. Yeah. It's, it's, it's John Marsden from um, Red Dead Redemption. Oh, yeah? So, kind of cool. That is cool. And so, it's just what you look like. You, you change your traits and everything. So, how much time in a, in a 12 or 24-hour day you spend doing certain things. Mm -hmm. And I got it so my guy's wearing a fedora and a suit. And he's perfectly balanced between how much time he spends illegally doing work and legally doing work. Oh, yeah? So, I got a nice little Goodfellas vibe going on. So, I'm kind of happy. 
But, you know, servers are an issue right now, so things are a little bit tanking, so I'm going to be staying off of GTA Online until it smooths out. Yeah. But, um... Check out uh, my blog over on WordPress to see all about Valve's big announcements from the week. We got our new operating system from them. We got our Steam Engine, Steam Train, Box, whatever they're calling yep. it, I can't remember. And the controller. No thumbsticks, all touchscreen feedback. That looks pretty feedback. cool. It's going to be really cool. I would love to get my hands on it and check it out to see how it works. I think it'll be get used to get... You have to, have to get used to it, right? Yeah. Moving no exactly. No physical buttons to tap in or anything. Yeah. It's going to be weird, especially for games that you traditionally use thumbsticks on. Yeah. But I'm psyched about it. Depending upon the price point and whether you have to stream or not from a, a high-end PC, that'll determine how much I invest in this. But mm -hmm. unless we get our Sony Vita TV anytime soon, I might pick up a Steam box to check it out. Yeah. But uh, my favorite game news of the week, South Park, The Stick of Truth, finally has a release date. Finally. It's uh, December 10th of uh, this year, which is bizarre because it's after the next-gen hoopla, after Thanksgiving, and bef just before Christmas. So it's in that weird type of zone where not a lot of big games are usually released because yeah. usually it's November, they shotgun everything out. And being new gen cycle, mm -hmm. it's a little odd. Now, it's only for a PS3 and 360, even though they could easily just give us a port and I'd probably buy it again. Yeah. But the game looks fantastic. If you've been looking at any of the development of this game, it looks like an episode of the show. It's an RPG that has like huh. the side-style battle, like the old Final Fantasies. That's cool. The supporting ca cast of characters outside the kids end up being your special abilities. So one of the summons is Mr. Slave, who jumps up and lands on a guy on in a certain area. And it goes, to, as uh, the guys at IGN said, it goes to a dark place, figuratively and literally. Huh. And the game looks fantastic. It looks gorgeous. Um, they mapped out the entire town of South Park for the first time. Really? Because, yeah. And they had no idea how to do it. The, the, the developers, um, the guys who are making the game Obsidian now, mm -hmm. had to ask Matt and Trey, like, so where is this in relation to this? And they're like, we have no idea. Oh, wow. We've never mapped out South Park before. Like, why would we? Who cares? Like, if, yeah, if, who cares? if Kyle's got to go to Stan's house, he just he's goes. there. Yeah. But in the game, you, you walk around South Park. It's like, oh, crap, we have to map the town out. Yeah. There, uh, There is an $80 special edition, and I'm not super big on special editions. But uh, I might get this one. You get a couple of downloadable character skins or characters. They kind of give you stat boosts like damage, defense, attack powers, and everything. Mm -hmm. They're kind of cool. They're like rangers and magicians. You get a hand-drawn, a quote-unquote hand-drawn map of South Park like from the game. So you can kind of find your way around. But it also comes with a six-inch Cartman figure as a grand wizard. Oh, that's cool. So we've got the staff and the hat on, and it just it looks great. So hmm. I might pick that one up. And, uh, yeah, it's, I've been looking forward to this game for a long time. Obsidian has taken their time with it. They haven't pushed out a rushed uh, product after THQ went bankrupt. Um, they were given, Obsidian was given the game to, to finish off, and it looks like they've done a fantastic job. Yeah. So I am very, very much looking forward to this game. Sounds interesting. Yeah. We had uh, another DC Comics character popping up on uh, TV screens coming up soon. NBC getting a John Constantine series? Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. So, let's run this down. We've got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. for Marvel over yeah. at ABC. Possibly Agent Carter. Possibly Agent Carter at ABC, hopefully. Yeah. We've got Green Arrow over at CW. Flash, possibly over at CW. Yeah. Uh, Gotham on over Fox. on Fox. And yeah. John Constantine on NBC. Yeah. Like, that's five happening, one maybe. So, six properties... Of comic books on TV. Yeah. That's unprecedented. Well, eventually. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be really cool. Like, if they space that out, if the schedules line up right, that's like one comic book show a week, a day. Yeah. Like, it'd be really cool. If they space it out well. Yeah. I'm hoping that doesn't mean that Constantine is excluded from any movie properties, because... I picture Constantine as a magic slash Smallville vibe. <laughs> I'm hoping more supernatural than Smallville. I'm hoping more su supernatural. But... It's young Constantine growing up in the streets oh of England. Oh my god. <laughs> Why are you ruining it? Why are you saying things that shouldn't Where exist? Where he runs into a computer nerd named Glowy. <laughs> Go to hell. Go to so many circles of hell. I'm looking forward to it. I love... I've I've been enjoying uh, reading we'll, John we'll Constantine. Yeah. I even like the movie with Keanu Reeves. 
It was so nice. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Uh, at least this time they can cast a blonde British guy because they won't cost too much money. Yeah. Uh, speaking of money, a little bit upset that the creators of Constantine aren't going to get any cash for this because it falls yeah. under the movie deal. Yeah. That's a bit bit of a screw job, but it is. Yeah. It is. But uh, with Gotham, Flash, John Constantine coming up, I'm I'm hoping they call it Hellblazer. I really am. I don't know if they can though. They'd have to air it after 10 p.m. Why? Because of the watershed. Not well. The BBC have the watershed, but ours is still like uh, 9 p.m. I believe. Just for the word hell. Yeah. Really? Yuppers. So, uh, okay, that seems weird. So oh, it might well. just be Constantine, Constantine or John, whatever, right? Yeah. So, but oh, John Constantine. That'd be that'd be cool. Be kind of yeah. People now, if it was like HBO or whatever, doesn't matter. Yeah, all bets right? are off. But yeah. because it's network, you know. So. Did uh, did you watch the finale of Breaking Bad? Who did not watch the finale? Nobody of didn't Bad. watch this. I Everyone know. watched it. It was pretty awesome i i loved it i didn't like episode 15 i think was my favorite that was this week's no 16 was this week um Mm, no yes no yes no yeah whatever continue on yes 15 (laughs) i liked episode granite state was episode 15 felina was episode 16 um fit granite state was a fantastic episode it it basically cleared the way for this episode yeah well that's and it, the whole it, season I, was clear in the way i for this enjoyed episode. it better as a tv episode this one it felt it was definitely a nice conclusion but i enjoy granite state more uh i, I don't but, know i really like this episode yeah oh i don't get me wrong I, I i love this episode especially when he was like cleaning house there at the end yeah so that was oh yeah I warning there might be spoilers discussing this everyone's seen it. everyone's Come seen on. It. everyone's yeah. seen it there's everyone, no spoilers. everyone that would listen to this show has seen breaking bad exactly so, so there's no spoilers yeah here. I love that show it continued to just hammer home visual metaphor, audio music cues, using music to tell a story just so well throughout the entire course of the show. Like, we've always had characters in pink yeah. dying. This yeah. time it was every character in blue just offed. I know, eh? Which is really cool. Um, the the music that Walt was playing in the car, yeah, basically telling you what's going to happen. That was awesome. Was so good. And uh, I love the whole when he's saying goodbye to um, Haley, Holly, Holly, Holly. When he's yeah. saying goodbye to Holly, and then at the end when he's in the lab, the exact same like emotion and action behind it. Yeah. When he's like stroking your head, and then he's stroking the tank. I know, that eh? was so good. That was pretty awesome. Oh man, and that I, funny enough, that is our TV super scene of the week. Actually, my. My favorite scene in that, though, was when uh, he's talking to his wife, mm-hmm. and I hate the wife. I've hated her since day one. I came around to I just... I still hate her now. I read a quote online, and I totally agree with it. I went from wanting her to leave to yeah. praying that she'd get out. Like, yeah. get the, get get off the show. I hate you, To Oh, my God, please let her get out of the situation she's in. No, oh, I didn't care about that. I still wanted her yeah. off the show by the end. But my favorite scene was <clears throat> when he's talking to her. And it was just the one line, mm-hmm. I did it for myself. Mm-hmm. That was the best. Like, that um, was the That was best. my second favorite line. My favorite line from the, the entire episode might be my favorite line from the entire series. Mm-hmm. If we're going to do it this way, you're going to need a bigger knife. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, like, cool. it was awesome. I mean, it's not quite as punchy as I yeah. am the danger or I, I'm the man, I'm the one who knocks. Yeah. I think that's going to be the the legacy of that series is those lines. Probably, but yeah. You're going to need a bigger knife. Like as soon as it happened, I'm thinking, "Oh my god, <clears> he's, <throat> he's Jaws. Mm-hmm. This is Jaws. This is so good." Yeah, I like that the fact all the all the seasons comprise one year of his life. Yeah, yeah, it's. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it's so so incredible. So uh, I kind of want to rewatch now the whole thing. Straight. I, I mentioned on the show how they have that big barrel version of yeah. the series on pre order. I love those type of things. I love when you get all the cool little bonus and pack-ins. Mm-hmm. Breaking Bad, to me, is a show that doesn't need that. No, it doesn't. It's just the show. It's a great story from start so to finish. So I'm hoping there's just a five-season set of just the show. Oh, I'm sure there will be. I don't... You know, like your Costco version yeah, or whatever. Because that's the one I'll get. As much yeah. as I love all the ex- extra stuff, I just want... Yeah that show i definitely do want it as well i'm yeah. probably going to purchase it yeah. if i can find it yeah so my uh 
there was, I was reading a lot, like, moving a lot of stuff about the finale online. One of the things, uh, one of my favorite parts in this in the episode was when he's in the car, and it's you've got trying to start the engine with like this cockamamie plan that he sees on TV, like trying mm-hmm. to hotwire the car, and then and then the cop drives by, and I, it was at, at that same time where he says, "Just get me home, and I'll do the rest." Yeah. What was your interpretation? What did you think he meant by that? I don't know. I've read a lot of people online saying he was like maybe praying or like asking God. I think it was. Um, I think he was Walt, talking to himself. I think it was Walt asking Heisenberg. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, or just well, like Heisenberg asking Walt, like because at that point, after he sees Gretchen on TV, basically his, everything that he's worked for is destroyed, like yeah. gray matter and the blue meth is still being made. Yeah, I think that was the last we saw of Walter White. But Walter White has always been more the brains. Yeah, but he's never he's never had a multiple personality or anything I, like that. I think there are because like Walter White is no. is the home guy. The... I think that's reading way too much. I into I it. think I think maybe he's just talking to his cancer. Even like let me live a little bit longer. My my I interpret it to be that Heisenberg was running the show. He was the one that was pulling the scheme. He's the schemer and the liar. But he needed Walt to get him out of there. Nah. That's that's how I read into it. I don't think so because over the whole five seasons, not there wasn't even anything alluded to or even mentioned or even shown. I don't of say anything. I don't, multiple. I don't say he has multiple personality disorder. I'm saying it's or anything he, like that. He, in his mind, he is he has these different sides of his personality. Like when he's yeah, when he no. and and Walter White was basically dying over the course of the series. Yeah, and all you were left with was Heisenberg. And you saw that when he was intimidating Gretchen in their house, which I love that with the laser pens, even though those were, I know. Those were the greatest laser that pointers was ever. Awesome. As soon as he said, I paid $200,000 to the greatest hitmen in the state, I'm like, yeah. they're not hitmen. That is such a shitty line to say. Yeah. And it, it sounds like a person who watches TV and is aware of the realm mm-hmm. of movies, that's what they would say. Yeah. Because if it was a real person in that situation, you wouldn't say greatest hitman <clears throat> in the state. Yeah. If you were a human being who watched movies and through your entire life, that's what you would say. Yeah. So I knew something was up, and I just thought it was really cool. Yeah. So yeah, Breaking Bad, I am sad that it's over, but I'm happy with how it ended. It'll forever live on in media format. Yeah. You can find my review on that show on my blog, yeah. actually. Yeah. So I highly enjoyed it. Uh, I loved it. Other TV news. Uh, well, we had some Walking Dead webisodes premiere yeah. today. Actually, yesterday, sorry. When's the premiere? For the new season, is it? I'm not sure actually. It's got to be around Halloween. It's got to be soon. Yeah, yeah. So uh, three three little tiny webisodes comprise about I don't know 25 minutes or so. They've always been. They I've were, always enjoyed them. They were good. They're not as good as the previous years, but uh, <clears throat> I like it. It's got the lead actress from uh, The Last Exorcism. I don't know if you recall seeing yeah. her or seeing mm-hmm. those movies. So she was all right. I think she overacted just a little bit in it. Mm-hmm. But um, it was good. The cool twist in this year's episode, episodes, was uh, that it all took place in the same hospital where Rick wakes up. Oh, cool. From the first episode of the first season. That's kind of awesome. So that was pretty sweet. And it shows you how it all comes around. Nice. So maybe it's a tiny bit of a spoiler, but it's... Con- not, setting, not content. It's, it's okay. not really, yeah. So I, I think Bicycle Girl sweet. was my favorite one. Yeah, that was cool. That's a good episode. I like that. Yeah. So check them out. Three little webisodes. They're already on our Facebook page if you want to check them out there. Nice. And, uh, yeah. Neat little Pretty bit of cool. TV. New show premiered this week. Uh, probably the only show worth mentioning that premiered this <laughs> week. It's hilarious. It will be the only comedy, I'm going to say, that will survive the axe that seems to befall all <laughs> comedies in the last few years. Bold. Um, Hello, Ladies, starring Stephen Merchant on HBO. Uh, if, if you recall or do not recall, Stephen Merchant is one half of the Ricky Gervais Stephen Merchant writing team. Hmm. So uh, he's had a hand in everything from extras to pretty much anything Ricky Gervais does, Stephen Merchant is in it and or writes it. So, he's hilarious. He does stand up. There's an awesome clip. It's also on our Facebook actually, of uh, him on Jimmy Kimmel, Kimmel doing a uh, sorry Jimmy Fallon. Uh-huh. I always mix them up. I don't yeah. know. He's on Jimmy Fallon. They're doing a lip sync off competition uh-huh. 
it was amazing. But uh, hello, ladies. He's he's basically just a single guy on the lookout for love, and uh, he just can't get none. Maybe because he's seven feet tall and he looks like a bobblehead. Eh. But whatever. I'm sorry. Every time you say hello, ladies, I just can't help but hear Val Venus's intro music. I know, eh? <laughs> hello, lady. <laughs> <laughs> the towel. Oh God! Uh, <laughs> that towel must have like been so disgusting. I know. I soaked in like oil and shit from his body and stuff. <laughs> but anyways, hello, ladies. You know, forget Brooklyn Nine. What with Andy Samberg, that won't last. Dads won't last. Goldberg. I've won't heard last. awful things about dads. Dads is super racist. Do not watch it. <laughs> it I think. I thought you were going to say for another reason. Uh, our uh, Bex, our recurring guest, I should the say. Griff. The Griff. The uh, Griff. She said Dad's was the only show ever to get like a zero on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Yeah. That's how bad it is. Wow. Yeah. Now, awesome. I don't know if that rating has gone up since. But, it's gone uh, down. What? <laughs> negatives. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I don't think any comedies this year are going to survive. It's it's hard for... I don't know why. Comedies just don't make it nowadays. The only... The last... People aren't in a comedy mood. Yeah, the last two or three... Modern Family has survived. Community yeah. has survived. New Girl seems to be holding Actually, in yeah, there. Actually, New Girl has survived. Mindy Kaling show is kind of the Mindy Project. Yeah. It almost got cancelled last year. They renewed it for this year. It's not bad, actually. It's just no one's watching it. Yeah. So if it survives this year, I'll be surprised. I hope it does, because she's pretty funny. And uh, Mr. D, which is a Canadian thing. Canadian uh, television shows seem to have it a little bit easier, because they don't rely on U.S. Nielsen ratings. Yeah. So they rely on people actually watching yeah, the show. Yeah. So the fact that it, mostly budget really CBC, right, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So if they can bring it in for a fair price and get a decent audience, it'll live, right? That's you know, that's like a, a TV show should. Exactly. That's the whole <laughs> that's the cool thing with uh one of the only cool things about Canadian television. It's so. not the budget. Exactly. So check out Hello Ladies. It is literally I think the only comedy worth watching this year and the only new show worth watching this week cool yeah awesome it's uh i got some interwebs uh news for you for all right to discuss this week see that wonder woman fan trailer thing i didn't bother oh I didn't bother that kind of makes it hard to talk about then <laughs> i don't know i saw it mentioned and i'm just like mm. it it's good it's there's no story whatsoever to it. Uh, you can tell they're just bit actors and stuff yeah. men doing it. But the costume was really well designed. It didn't make her look like a harlot. It looked like a practical, functional costume. Was it like the triple X costume that was amazing? It was more Amazonian battle gear than okay. straight up interpretation of a Wonder Woman All costume. Right. But um, yeah, it had no no semblance of a story whatsoever. There were some shots that didn't make sense. Some of the tracking was off. Some of the actual like. She throws a spear at one point, and somehow it changes angle midair and hits something. And like this is not physically possible, mm -hmm. but the content and the concept behind it looked really it was really cool. Uh, I got a bit of a chill when, she, like, at the end when she flies away, and like, this, see, you can do this. Yeah, it's like everyone's saying that the, the thing is okay. That the, the the actual performances, the visuals, the costume design is really good. Yeah, but the big thing that people are harking on about this this fan trailer, which they don't know, maybe it will be a full film if the guy gets money or whatever. But it shows that you can do a Wonder Woman film. Yeah. DC going on about how she's a hard character to get on film can't crack it. Marvel's giving us a talking raccoon that fires a gun. I know, and it looks what? awesome. You can't get the female version of Superman to work on... Okay, you can't really get the male version of Superman to work on film most of the time. But yeah. why Why are you not trying? Mm -hmm. Why? Agreed. I don't understand. Well, hard to it's, say. Ugh. Seeing as I'm the re the uh, resident Dragon Ball fan uh, on the, the show, the only Dragon Ball fan, true, in North America. No, <laughs> there's there's a great product where I, I want to import it because I love it so much. It's Dragon Ball Z hair gel. Oh my there's, god! There's there's the three, five, and seven star Dragon Ball style. The three star is like just normal regular Goku black yeah. hair and everything. Uh, the five is like Kaioken style, so it's like extra hold. Mm. And the seven, so Star Dragon Ball, is a Super Saiyan Goku, and it's all like, it's just extra hold hair gel. But they come in little Dragon Balls. 
That's like the cool. three, five, and seven star balls, and I just I think they're so cool. It's such an awesome product, and it's like why has this not happened beforehand? It's the only Dragon Ball Z product, it's like tie-in product I've seen that's been better than that was the Super Saiyan fries they had in Japan. It was the carton was like Goku's face. And then his hair stopped just above his brow. Yeah. And then the fries made the rest of the Super Saiyan hair. Huh. And it's like, that is pretty cool. So I, I love, I thought it was such a great little product. Mm. Shut up, it's awesome. Hmm. Um, question for you. Sure. What is your favorite internet video that you have seen in the last week or so? Oh, I have no idea. Well, that just um... fell flat, didn't it? Uh, internet video... Think about it. I'll answer my own question. The My favorite video I've seen this last week or so was this uh, little this high school or public school uh, kids from somewhere in the States. They did a cover of 46 and 2 by Tool. Oh, yeah. And, man, these kids nailed it. Uh, they had this girl oh. singing uh, singing the lyrics, and she's a, she's a good little singer. Um, the drummer... Is so friggin' metal at the course of the video. Right at the end, he like hops up off of his stand and like just starts hammering on the cymbal just at the end of the song. And the bass player is fantastic and just they did such a great job covering it. I don't know if it was in a studio or at their school, but they did such a killer job. And 46 and 2 is a hard song to play. Huh. Like it's heavy on bass, the drums are obviously it's a tool song, so the drums are pretty hard in there. So 46 and 2 is a hard song to play for, you know, most grown-up bands. And these, these music kids just nail it. And it's so good. <laughs> That's cool. So that was that was my favorite video on the uh, website I can't, scene. I watch so many music videos and stuff. I guess the last one I watched was yesterday. Uh, because I'm pretty... I enjoy the K-pop quite a bit. I didn't I watched... say music video, I said internet video. That's an internet video. Damn it's it. on the internet. You wouldn't get music videos. So, uh, there's the new after school video for their newest single, which uh, I don't recall the title, but it was good. Of course you did. Just like all after school videos are good. I don't even know what that is. I know you don't. But for all you K pop fans, you know, and I know. Jeff's talking to you. That's right. Just like all you Tool fans, Woo! sung by little kids, know about Gary's video. Tool is amazing. Did you uh, check out Mortal Kombat Legacy? No, I did not, yes. God damn it! Would you watch things that we're talking about on the show? Because, <laughs> uh... They don't come up on Facebook, and I don't see them anywhere else mentioned, so I don't think to watch them. We talked about it last week on the show! Yeah, I don't recall you talking about it. <laughs> God damn it! Okay, you've got some time before uh, you go to your other thing I actually that you don't. do. I don't. I have don't. to get ready damn. and stuff. So. Okay, uh, watch it when you get home tonight. Um, Probably won't, I'll actually. Damn, watch some of them. Maybe the weekend. There's ten episodes. They all popped up at the same time oh, on well, uh, Machinima's Machinima channel, so yeah. you don't have to wait in between. Uh, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, little... A little slow in the middle, I'd say. Yeah. I don't want to give too much away because, like, Jeff hasn't seen it. But, uh... That doesn't matter to me if you That's you're true. You don't care. No, yeah. I don't care. Um, really good. You can definitely tell they got a bit more money behind it. Some of the some of the episodes are a little bit too recappy and retreading of what happened. Is Jerry Ryan still in it? No. Oh, uh, there goes, like, most of but my Casper motivation. But Casper Van Dien is. I don't care. Most of my motivation <sighs> just went out the window now. Mark Dacascos is in it. I don't care. Just watch them. I probably will at some point. The uh, the best episodes are the ones that feature heavy with uh, Kung Lao and Liu Kang. The fight choreography is great. Having the original Shang Tsung back in okay, is really on. cool. Is Christopher Lambert in it? No. Damn it. What, you you, you, you love the Dutch guy or wherever the hell yes, he's from? Yes, Play, Playing a Chinese thunder god? Yes. Okay. I awesome. I did. He was so hammy in that, but <laughs> the fate of billions rests on your hands. <laughs> Sorry. You have the laugh down. I know. That was amazing. I might have seen that movie before. <laughs> I might have seen that a few times. I haven't seen it in years. Your sideshow freaks attack my fighters before the tournament. That is strictly forbidden. <laughs> Oh my god. I've seen that a lot. <laughs> you should go for Halloween as Raiden. Oh, you're so good. Dutch Raiden. <laughs> Dutch Raiden. <laughs> that sounds dirty. I know, it does, doesn't it? 
we, right? <laughs> <laughs> we we gotta put that on Urban Dictionary. Just make we up, should. Just make up what a Dutch Raiden is. See, this is the kind of innovation you get when you listen to the pendulum. This is true. <laughs> Feel free to continue to check out that innovation uh, right here on our YouTube channel. That's right. You can uh, check us out on subscribe. Check us out on Facebook. The you can, pendulum uh, on Facebook. Exactly. You can check out Jeff's blogs at uh, thetelltalemind.com. Ooh, upgrade. at uh, mindmeldshome.tumblr.com. I've got uh, my WordPress uh, blog is uh, the shelf life of Wagnerog dot WordPress because I'm cheap dot com. Right. Uh, check that out. That's my main review and news. But you site. have something new coming. I up. know. I've a uh, bit of a bit of a photog here back in the day. So uh, I've converted my Tumblr over to kind of a photo blog, photo journal type thing where I'm gonna be doing some photos out in the world with some of my figures. It's uh. A, a small toy in a big world. So uh, check that out. I'll toss a link up. There's nothing there right now. I've been, I've gone out and done a few shots. I'm just in the process of finalizing the first few things to go up. Cool. So uh, I'll be sharing that on Tumblr, and uh, every once in a while I'll toss a link up on the uh, the WordPress one to link so, over to it. So cool. hopefully you check it out. So uh, next week I'll be looking at Suicide Risk and Avengers: Endless Wartime, the new Warren Ellis hardcover graphic novel from marvel i almost picked that up today did you yeah it looked you really should have it's, it looks awesome I'm oh gonna my read god it today. it's so pretty i'm gonna read it today and you'll hear about it next week on the show as well as shield episodes hopefully that's that we'll right get back to watching well, and, maybe, and mortal kombat legacy maybe maybe, maybe. maybe. We'll, maybe. we'll talk about how good shield is <laughs> and uh much more on the spot comic reviews and uh more ppps more ppps PPPs for our pendulites. I still, and, uh, I'm still not a big fan of pendulites. I think we're gonna start doing some little uh, horror recommendations for yeah, upcoming as well as Halloween. That's coming right. up to Halloween, the greatest of all holidays. So look for some new minisodes coming soon to you. Horror to your ears. stuffs. Yeah. So and, uh, uh, that's it for today, that folks. That is it. Everyone, you have a good day. Take care. See you later.